this tutorial will show the basics of how to use Pro Tools, uh, particularly for those of you who are beginners. Um, you can uh, use this tutorial to just kind of figure out where things are and how to get started on your first assignment. So when you open up Pro Tools, you probably get a window that looks something like this. Um, we sort of have a working edit uh, area here in the middle with some numbers and lines across the top. We'll explain that. Um, there's an area over here called clips. Uh, we've got a lots of things along the top here, some different menus also way up here on top. And here's a little transport window here. Um, so uh, if you want to get rid of this, you can just click on that. That goes away. If I want to bring that back, you can just go to window and hit transport and there it comes back. So you'll notice that there's a bunch of different window possibilities here. Um, we won't worry about them right now and I will get rid of this for now because um, we also have access to it up here, which is kind of nice. So uh, the first thing you're probably gonna want to be able to do is just create a couple tracks in Pro Tools. So I'll just go under track and create new. Um, you can just create one track or I'm gonna create three tracks. I would start by creating a mono track and we're gonna create an audio track. Um, just keep it as samples is fine and you can just use the default name and I'm going to hit create. And so now we have three audio tracks here. Um, as we're looking at each audio track, you'll notice that um, there's some uh, information here. There's this little button here, which is a record enable button. So if you need to record into one of these tracks, you click on this button to then be able to record into it. If you're going to be recording from a microphone. Uh, there's also um, this button, uh, which we're not going to worry about for right now. Um, and and we'll, these two are fairly handy. The S is for solo and the M is for mute. So I can mute certain tracks um, or I can solo a track. And you notice I can actually solo multiple tracks. So I can solo just one or I can solo these two. And you'll also notice that the mute also automatically turned on. So as long as there's something muted or something soloed, um, uh, these other ones will be muted. Uh, that's not the same case with mute. Um, it just mutes that one track if I click on it. Okay. Um, the next thing we'll want to be able to do is start to get some audio in here. And so for right now, I'm going to show how to get some audio from uh, the SF Live folder. Um, and the best way to do this is under file. Uh, we're going to go down to import and audio. And so now uh, I'm in my SF Live folder and uh, I'll grab, so under, let's say, wind here. Uh, I can preview these by clicking on them. So this is a bass flute sound. Um, and I'll note, you notice that um, it gives me some information about the file. So it's 16 bit, uh, 16 um, bit depth rate. 44.1 uh, hertz uh, sample rate. And so unfortunately my session is at a 48 uh, kilohertz sample rate. So what I need to do is I need to convert it. A general rule is if you ever see that this convert is highlighted, you wanna convert it to get it into your session. So I'm just gonna say convert. I'm gonna grab maybe a couple other sound. Um, let's see, here's maybe a clarinet sound. Okay, we'll grab that one convert, and maybe an oboe sound here. Okay, cool. So convert. And, uh, and then I'm done. And I'm going to say, um, for right now, I would definitely um, tweak head, which is the slowest. Um, but this will give you the highest quality sound in terms of conversion. In general, you always want to select this. And everything else is just set to default. And I'm going to hit done. Um, so I'm in a demo, this is my, the name of my session. This is the name of the actual Pro Tools file here. And it's gonna store all these files after it converts it in this audio files folder. So I say open, and I can either put each one into a new track or the clip list, which is the clip list is over here. I'm just gonna have it put it in a clip list. If you do select new track, what it does is it takes each of your audio files and adds a new track uh, with uh, that audio file at the beginning of the track. So in general, I recommend just adding it to your clip list. If you ever notice that this clip list is not here, it's possible to sort of 
hide it if I drag this all the way over. Ugh. Actually, it's not letting me even hide it. Oh, there we go. Now it's hidden. So what I'm going to do is if I just bring my cursor way over here and I get this little thing, I can open this up and no, come on. There we go. Uh, there's my clip, my clip list there. Okay. So there are my three files. And now all I need to do is if I just click on them and drag them, I can bring those into my session. So I'll grab each one of them and drag them into maybe a different track. And now if I want to hear what this sounds like, I'll just click here and hit the space bar to play, or I can just hit play here. All right, cool. So um, we can move the sounds around. We can, so if I, um, so let's talk a little bit about tools now. Uh, up here in this area, right here, um, there's some sort of tools that let us do certain things to the sounds uh, or to these clips, right? So each one of these is a, is a sound clip. Um, so um, you'll notice that this area that's highlighted in blue, uh, we call this the smart tool because what this lets me able to, what this lets me do, is sort of use all of these three tools. Uh, um, not at the same time, but depending on how I move my cursor over a, um, a clip, it'll change to one of these tools. So there's the grabber tool, lets me, lets me grab and move um, a clip. There's the selection tool, which does what it implies, it selects things. And then there's a trim tool, which trims the clip. So let me show you how these work. So you'll see, um, I need, I wanna zoom in here a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is um, there's kind of a zooming in and out feature here. So if I click on this, you'll see that these um, clips get larger um, or if I click this way, they get smaller. So I'll do this. And then I can also change the way the waveform looks like if I click on these a little bit. So this is the waveform size. So I'll see how that changes. So this actually doesn't change the, the um, how loud or soft it is. It just lets us see. Sometimes what ends up happening is we record something that's at a very low frequency, uh, sorry, a low um, uh, amplitude, and uh, we hardly see any of it. And so we want to maybe be able to look at the signal a bit better to kind of see what's there. Um, so, but again, this doesn't change the gain or the volume of the actual sound. And I can prove that if I just hit play and I change this. Right, I didn't do anything as I changed those. So uh, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more here. And then uh, I can also move through the session um, by grabbing this bar down here and, and doing this. Um, so there's a couple handy shortcuts if you want to know about. One is if I wanna zoom, another handy way to zoom in and out is I'm using a, a key on my computer and let me just switch my screens here. So on my computer, I'm hitting the, the command key and I'm hitting either this um, uh, key or this key, um, these brackets, right? And command um, left bracket will um, make the screen smaller or um, the zoom smaller and this will make it larger. So command either one of these keys will, um, and on a PC, sorry, this is on a Mac, on a PC, it would be control. So you hit control one of these buttons, okay? And this works on an extended keyboard like this, or if you're on just a laptop and you just, you're just seeing this part, right? You're not seeing any of this stuff over here. Uh, it's the same shortcut. So let me go back into Pro Tools here, and I'm hitting Command, and I'm just changing it that way. So this is kind of handy. Um, I'm a big fan of keyboard shortcuts to just kind of save time rather than sort of mousing around. But you can also just use this area here. Um, and just for, for further reference, um, there are a couple of presets here. And you can see if I click these, I get a few different sort of views this way as well. And then the last thing I'll just say about zooming is that there's a little kind of bar up here. And watch what happens as I zoom in and out. Uh, whoops, hang on, I, so I'm gonna, so you can see now I have, there's a little um, sort of highlighted area here, 
And if I click on it and move it, it lets me go to different parts of my file in the timeline. So if I zoom all the way out, right now I can see everything in the timeline. And if I zoom in, now I can see, you know, I've got about a third or so, a little more than a third uh, that I can see of the whole timeline so far. So let me go back to using these tools. Uh, so I've got the smart tool selected. And as I move my mouse around this region, and when it becomes a hand, it's the grabber tool. And I can just click and hold down on the mouse or my trackpad and I can move the sound. I can move it along the track this way. I can also move it to another track by dragging it this way. Um, just a word about coloring. What Pro Tools does is it, it keeps each track its own color. So that way we can kind of see uh, uh, tracks by their uh, associated color. So it's a little bit easier to keep track of that way. All of this is customizable for right now, just use the defaults. Uh, so there's my grabber tool. If I bring my mouse up now to the top half of this uh, clip, I have the selection tool. So now I can select anything. And what I could do is for instance, say, okay, I wanna copy that. And now move my cursor, let's say to this track down here, if I click there, now what I'll do if I, if, I, if I hit paste, it'll paste that selection I just had selected and paste it down here. Uh, and then there's also something, so that's my selection tool, there's my grabber tool, and then there's the trim tool, which is I, I bring my cursor towards the end or the beginning of a clip, you get this little uh, um, uh, sort of bracket. If I click and drag, you can see I can trim this file the ends like this. And that's actually true of this region down here. Remember, I, I only selected a certain region, but if I actually go to the trim tool, the whole file is actually still in here. So if I make a little bit of a mis little mistake in terms of my selection, I can always kind of go back and change it a little bit. So, so that's that. Um, let's see. So that's basically how we have, um, uh, our, our, we can move around our clips, we can edit them, or we can, uh, you know, um, do all that. Um, we've learned how to zoom. Um, let me talk a little bit about um, this area right here. There's something called shuffle, slip, spot, and grid. And these are different sort of editing modes I can have in Pro Tools. Um, I would recommend for right now that you use um, the slip mode. And what this allows me to do is just move the sound wherever I want. Probably the next more common mode to use is, is the grid mode. And what the grid mode does is actually um, locks our sounds um, to a grid. And the grid will be whatever is um, set to over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, I can't see the grid, but if I click on this little button right there, now I can see sort of what the grid is. Um, and it, it um, you can kind of see it's aligned with whatever we have selected here. So there's a little timeline that goes across the top. And we have bars and beats, minutes and seconds, there's time code and samples. Uh, and you can activate or deactivate these. Um, for right now, uh, I'm going to deactivate time code. I don't really need to see that. And I really uh, doesn't even let me do, get rid of samples. So I won't worry about that. So uh, let's say you're working with uh, a BPM a metronome mark and you want to line up some of your sounds to that. What I can do is you can see as I move this, I can only move it so it locks to one of these grid points here. If I wanna change the size of the grid, I'm gonna do that up here. And so right now my grid is set to quarter notes. If I set it to eighth notes, you notice that we have an extra grid. All right, so here's my quarter note. And right here in the middle is an eighth note. So now I can move it there, I can move it there, I can move it there. If I want to move it somewhere in between these, I have, to, I have to change the grid size or I can go back to slip mode and now I can move it wherever I want, right? So it's slightly, it's not aligning it to the grid. So very handy, uh, uh, slip mode and grid mode. Um, just a quick word about shuffle. What shuffle does is actually, um, it will, if I, let's say I'm gonna move a sound from here, I'm gonna move this one up. Uh, it's gonna try to, um, put the beginning of one clip right at the end of the next clip. So I, I can't actually add any kind of gaps between clips. 
So, sorry, I went the wrong way here. So I'm gonna zoom out. So you can see as I keep adding clips here, that I can only add them to the beginning, right before or after sounds. Uh, but I can't move them. I mean, I can move it, right? It moved it to the beginning of this track. I can't put it right here. Uh, I'll hit Command Z to undo that, right? All my uh, functions here are the same in terms of copying and pasting and undoing and all that. So uh, if I wanted to add a little bit of a gap here, what I'd have to do is go back to slip mode. And then now I could grab this and move it. Now, you'll actually notice, let me undo that, is if I grab this sound and I start to move it over these other sounds, I'm going to move it away. Notice that it actually got rid of those. So that's actually a really important thing to remember is that um, uh, Pro Tools will, as I'm moving clips, if I move it over a clip, it within the same track, um, it'll delete whatever's underneath it, right? Or what I'm, what I'm moving this clip onto other clips. So if I want this clip to play over these clips at the same time, I'm probably better off moving it, let's say, down here. And so now I can work on, you know, a mix between these two. Um, I will say that there are ways that you can take a clip and do something where, um, like, let's say I have this sound and I want to do a crossfade between this and this. There is a way to deal with layers within a track where now, let's say this one, like if I move this, you'll see it's this one's gone. I'm going to undo. Um, there is a way that these can uh, crossfade within the same clip. I would not recommend uh, doing that right now. Um, for right now, if you want to have two different sounds crossfade, I would recommend uh, putting them on different tracks like this. And then what you can do is you can use automation to actually have these uh, crossfade. So let me show you how that works. So I have this sound and I want to have this one fade out and this one fade in. And so over here under, there's something called the waveform. And so what I can, I can see, I can view different parts of the track. So I'm going to click on waveform. I can see blocks. So there's my blocks. So those are, you know, uh, and that's just for this track. Um, if I want to see uh, this for all tracks, what I can do is I can hold down the option key or alt on a Windows machine. And I'm so I'm holding down the option key and I'm clicking on here. And now I can see the playlist for every track, or in this case, the waveform now for every track, um, volume. And you'll notice that um, the clip, our clips are a little bit grayed out now when we see these lines. Uh, and there's muting, which simply just mutes or unmutes the track, and then finally panning. So for right now, I'm going to recommend that you, you use panning, you use volume, and waveform in general. Um, so the interesting thing is when I'm in waveform, now I'm viewing the waveform, I can move um, my clips around uh, on the track. But once I go to volume, I can't actually I, I can select things, but I can't, um, I can't move the clip. What we're actually affecting now is volume. And so you'll see that if I, for instance, let's say I want, I'm double clicking within here, and I want to bring this clip uh, just down a little bit in terms of volume. Uh, and you'll see I have this little uh, horizontal bracket. I'm going to click and drag my mouse down. And so now I'm bringing, it, bringing the volume down by 20.1 decibels. So I can also do this for a whole region like this. And now I'm bringing all of that down. So what I do is I select part of a track or part of a region, and then I can move it like that. Um, I'm going to undo that because I want to create a crossfade here. I'm going to have this fade out and this one fade in. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, a couple of break points. So uh, one way to do this is to select the pencil tool. And now I can simply like draw that. So if you use the pencil tool, you can do that. I'm going to undo that to show you another way to do it. Go back to my smart tool. And if I hold down uh, the command key on a Mac or control on a PC, I get this little um, hand with a little pointy finger and I can add a node. And I'm going to add two of these, one there and one there. And now I can just click. Uh, so I've released the command key 
I know I can click on the node and I can bring this down. So the next step in completing this crossfade is to add a couple of breakpoints here. And what I also want to do is if I adjust this or this one, it's going to move from the last breakpoint. In this case, it's the very beginning of the track. So I'm going to undo and I'm going to add a breakpoint here after this clip. So now when I bring this down, I'll have a fade in and a fade out there. And so that sounds like this. Okay. So, uh, so that's how we can do um, uh, using automation with breakout points. And you can keep adding a whole bunch of these if you want uh, and do different things. Whoops. You know, up and down. You can also affect, uh, do the same thing with uh, panning as well. So I could, for instance, pan this one all the way to the left and then go to this other track and pan, pan this one all the way to the right. And so now panning and volume are affected and so with the crossfade as well as these pans. All right, and we're also hearing that sound right there. So, okay, so that's some basics about automation. Um, couple of things to keep in mind when we're automating something is that if I, if I copy and paste this clip, right, because right now I've got some volume information in this clip as well as some panning, right? And so if I'm looking at the waveform, um, what I'm going to, what I can do is um, I'm going to move it. Let's say I've to the beginning. And what happens is the automation moves with it. Okay, so the automation, uh, any automation we create in a track will stay, or in a clip in that track will stay with that clip. And it even stays if I copy and paste it, let's say onto another track. So I'm gonna check out the volume. And so there you can see that these two clips have the same volume information and the same panning, okay? So if I want to add a new clip uh, that has a different panning or, or sort of a, a, a base level of panning, like no automation, I can grab this into the track and you can kind of see that um, it's, it in this case, uh, whatever panning or volume was in the track in that location is sort of applied to this clip, right? So if I grab, let's say, this clip over here and put it into this track, you can kind of see, right? It doesn't necessarily, so this is how you can add a clip into a track and it's sort of dropped into whatever automation is there in that sort of empty region. So for this first assignment, um, Really all that I want you to be able to do is to get some sound clips into Pro Tools, into a few tracks, maybe anywhere from three to six tracks or so, and then work on a mix uh, of those different clips uh, in time. You know, about anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds. Uh, apply some automation in terms of affecting volume and panning over those clips and a sense of sort of a mix of those clips over time. So, um, uh, this is just building a foundation of playing with sound. Um, uh, but the foundation is really important here because um, we're going to add more and more things to, uh, to be able to automate. Uh, we can automate um, different effects and things like that as well. So uh, having a basic understanding of how automation works with volume and panning sort of sets a, sets a nice foundation. Uh, so when we start to apply this to a delay line, um, the, the concepts are basically the same. So one more important thing about automation is that at some point you might actually want to um, clear some of the automation. And so to do that, all we need to do is select what we want to delete in this case or move. Uh, and so if I select something, I'm gonna select this, I'm just hit the delete button and it got rid of all those, uh, those breakpoints. So if I wanna really start from scratch with volume, I can just uh, click on the track, hit Command A or select all, and then hit the delete button. And now all my volume automation um, goes back to the original uh, settings. Uh, but notice that panning, for instance, hasn't been touched. So if I wanna get rid of that, I'm gonna select this, delete that, and now panning is set, back, set to a default setting now. So uh, sometimes we just want to delete just a couple breakpoints. Sometimes we want to delete a whole bunch of things. So, uh, but the thing that I can't do is if I 
want to get rid of this clip, I can hit delete, but I'm actually not uh, able to do that because what I'm uh, affecting right now is the panning for this track. So I need to set it back to waveform and whoops, wrong track. So I set waveform. Now, if I click on this clip, whoops, I click on the clip, hit delete and it deletes it from, from this track. It doesn't delete it from my clips over here, right? Clips are still there and I could always bring it somewhere else here, but it deletes it, right? If I click all of these and delete, they're away, they're not in the track anymore, but they're still here on my uh, clips list over here. So uh, that's sort of important to remember as well. So the next thing I wanna show you is uh, how we can use some of these uh, audio suite plugins to uh, manipulate or change a clip. So I'm gonna grab this bell sound here. I'm gonna solo this track so we just hear it. So there's a little bell sound. So one of the things I can do is if, uh, I want to reverse that sound, have it actually go backwards. Um, I, just, uh, I just select the clip, I go under audio suite and uh, you can see under EQ, there's some EQ settings here, some like dynamics, pitch shift, which we'll talk about in a minute. I can add some reverb to this, some delays, modulation, uh, harmonic effects, sound fields, and then under other, there's um, this one here called reverse, which is really kind of handy. So I'm gonna click on reverse and it opens up this new window here. And there's not much I can do, I can just, basically reverse this file. So if I want to hear it, I can click on this little preview button here. So I'll do that. And it just keeps looping it. So I like that. So I'm just going to have to render that now. And notice actually that it also created a new uh, clip here. So this is our original one here. Right? And then this is the reversed sound. So we'll hear reverse and then the original. And my, what might be actually cool is if I put them right up against each other like this. So that's pretty cool. So now I'm gonna try to um, time stretch this same example. We pitch shifted, so under audio suite, I can go to pitch shift and under pitch shift is something called time shift. And so now what I can do is I can shorten it by making it any anywhere from uh, sort of at speed, right, to 400% um, faster or four times as, as fast to as much as four times or 25% as slow. So uh, the original length of the sound file was uh, about six seconds and now this is going to be about 14 seconds, I believe. So let's, uh, let's see what this happens when I render that. Now there's a little bit of um, what happened is it actually rewrote it and rewrote it over this other file. So I'm gonna delete that for now, but you wanna pay attention to that as when you're rendering these kinds of things in case there's something that's after it, you might have to move it. So, and here's what this sounds like. I'll start kind of here in the middle. So pretty cool, they're hearing lots of little transients and things like that. Um, we'll learn about exactly what a transient is later in the semester. So, uh, but there's some, you know, in terms of it, the sound file sort of being rewritten, you'll notice that it's time stretching it. But the pitch from the original is unchanged. So we're, we're stretching, we're making four times as long, but we're not dropping the pitch. In the old analog world, when we had tape and we, if we slowed the tape, let's say down, uh, if we tried to slow the tape half speed, what would happen is the um, pitch would drop down an octave and it would make it twice as long, right? So what's nice about a digital environment is that we can separate pitch and duration. So in this case, we're just keeping the same frequency, uh, but just making the whole sound file much, much longer, so. And of course you can keep doing this. The limit for any kind of pitch shift, right, is you know four times as slow or four times as fast. But let's say I wanted to make this even longer. I can select it and now I'm gonna do that again. And I'm gonna make it four times as long yet again. Hit render 
And now you can see I've got this super long file. It takes a long time here. So using pitch shifting and time uh, shifting is a great way to kind of really move way far away from what the original sound sounded like. So have fun exploring Pro Tools, um, playing with sounds, just kind of getting to know some of these um, ways of manipulating sound and uh, just work on an interesting kind of mix. Um, again, I'd encourage you to work in just slip or grid mode for right now. Um, we'll be learning about a lot of other things that Pro Tools can do, but for right now, this is plenty. So enjoy working in Pro Tools.